chair of the board. And in case you're wondering what the bell is doing here in the chair, we had a active member, Reggie Sawyer, pass away. So after the public speaking portion, which will give a couple more people a chance to come in, we'll do a little memorial service. So just to let you know what's going on. So we're not going to have a speaker system tonight. It's giving too much static in the back, so just speak loud. We'd appreciate it. The first group we got up is the Vapor Lounge. Right? Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Stacey, the general manager of the Vapor Lounge. Um, here on behalf of Vapor Lounge, uh, <coughs> Robert Salisi, S A L E S E. First and foremost, obviously, we're here uh, in good faith to uh, apologize for uh, inconveniences and discrepancies that have been caused within our community and our neighborhood. Uh, not in any way are we trying to uh, hide behind these incidents. We're well aware of what's going on. We take responsibility, again, by us being here. We are definitely uh, in the process of implementing even further action to uh, improve uh, our relations with the community, as well as the uh, type of operation that we uh, are currently running. Um, there are going to be some structural uh, changes on the way. And uh, the best thing that we can do at this point is ask for um, everyone's cooperation to uh, you know, just understand that, that you know, unfortunate things do happen. Um, it's an unfortunate world that we live in sometimes. And, uh, things happen that are beyond our control. And so when things like this happen, all we can do is try to be better and uh, improve from there. And we're willing to take any uh, questions, uh, you know, criticisms, and things of that nature. Excuse me. Well, questions, uh, really quickly, questions from the board members about this incident. And, uh, there was an incident in Vapor Lounge last Wednesday uh, where the police came, someone was allegedly hit over the head with a bottle, uh, has some wounds, open wounds on his face, I guess from lacerations from the bottle. Uh, it was a violent incident. Uh, this, uh, no one was apprehended at this point. Uh, there's a victim, I believe, who was still in the hospital uh, and recovering. Uh, he's been released, okay. Um, but in any event, this is the second or third time we're drinking vapor lounge before us with some of these violent matters. And as you guys know, on Super Bowl weekend, there was some sort of lewd incident that occurred as well that of course was something important to us, but we, of course we don't want to see uh, this in our community. And they're here again to tell us how they're going to operate going forward with this establishment. And, and what are you looking to do? So at this point, uh, we clearly, uh, we've changed security companies. Uh, we implemented a new security company. Uh, obviously everyone licensed, registered in the state of New York. Um, you know, added up, obviously, to cost of our own to uh, be more safe than possible, in addition to having uh, security outside at the end of every evening to clear the block because it's unfair to just allow people to go into the streets uh, like I've seen at, you know, different locations so we can, you know, make sure that everyone is not disrupted. In this so will the vapor lounge continue to operate as a hookah lounge? Is my well, question. Moving forward, uh, the plan is to change the method of operation. To what? Something more, I would say, family uh, and neighborhood oriented. <laughs> Still the gaming bar, um, but definitely shining away from uh, seven night a week DJ. Um, you know, maybe just doing uh, occasional DJs, um, and, and you know, implementing stronger dress codes and uh, keeping our age at 25 and things that we kind of been doing. You know, unfortunately, if individuals involved in <clears throat> all of these incidents are not children. Um, they're people that just happen to come in. They're not people that we know. They're not friends of ours. We've complied with. <clears throat> Police department in every single incident. We haven't shot away from getting up footage. Um, you know, we've been, you know, Sergeant Bean and, uh, and the entire police that police that knows that whenever there is an incident, we, you know, we are very uh, in compliance with everything that we can do that's within our power. Unfortunately, controlling the hands of others is not possible. Jim, over there. Jim Craig, though. Ma'am, go ahead. You have your Yeah, but you. Okay, sir, uh, you're a security company. How many years license? Uh, the company itself has been in, in business for 27 years. Okay, Casino present security. people in the company, how long? I'm sorry? Present people in the community, how long? I, I don't understand the following question. 
how long had they been offices of the Corporation of the Security? The individuals that work for us? Yeah. Everyone has been licensed for at least three years that works for us. All right. All the licenses have been verified? The Tom State Liquor Authority paid a visit. They saw that we were in full compliance with uh, everyone was registered, <coughs> licensed, and bonded with the state of New York. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, question was, um, your policy is on Wednesdays? Uh, no, this was a beer bottle. This was actually a, uh, a Corona bottle, which uh, another thing that we're going to be implementing is unfortunately pouring all of our uh, beers into plastic cups after 12 a.m. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more difficult because people sometimes give you a little bit of a pushback, but safety's first. Safety's obviously the most important thing. And what, what posts are set up within the vapor lines as, as far as security? So we have an individual at the front who checks all IDs, wands, and scans everyone that enters the venue. Uh, then we keep one individual, basically, it, I don't know if you've been, but it's not a very large uh, space. So we keep one individual in the middle, and then one individual towards the back. So, you know, it, it, it was an incident that was actually broken apart, and then the individual who actually started everything went back into the, the fracas, I guess you could say, the melee, and, um, and, and, and re-aggravated the situation, which caused, obviously, nothing that he deserved to get. But, you know, it wasn't just, uh, I wouldn't say it was an innocent bystander, thank God that just happened to get, you know, this happened to them. There was an individual that was involved in the incident, unfortunately. When you say you went back into the melee, you were in the process of being escorted out? Yes, we escorted out two uh, gentlemen. You know, our hands are also very tied in the way that we can escort people out. We can't be overly physical. So there's certain things that, that we're not going to do. So we removed them within the parameters that we're allowed to remove them with. One individual is still there that we were unaware that was with the group. Because obviously when a scenario like that happens, it's, it's kind of chaotic to be able to identify every member of the party who was standing over there and not necessarily with the group per se. But uh, when it did happen, there was an individual that kind of snuck around, went back into the group that we had already separated, re, uh, you know, refired the issue. And, and then got hit with the head and Correct. Which again, we're not condoning in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to be understood as to how it transpires. Does your scanner for IDs, can it save um, yes. or identify? Yes, it does. So what we have is the option, uh, obviously, individuals that we don't allow or permit right, back so in, they're banned. Yes, so an ID, uh, the scan will come up banned. They will not be allowed back into the venue ever again. Um, you know, knowing this, sometimes it's after the fact, unfortunately. But to, pre you know, to, to prevent further scenario, it does allow us and to I just have one other question. Please. What's the difference between the, co the security company that you had the day of the incident and the one you just hired? Well, you know, it, every security company is, uh, it, it is obviously different. You know, certain people are very good talkers. Some people are more physical. We don't want the physical. We don't want there to be guys beating up on patrons. That's the last thing that we want. We feel that the team that we brought in now is going to be a good speaking team, but can also, um, the, the, the owner of the company actually has some, um, some marine background, so I feel that he instills some of that within his, uh, the, the, the individuals that he chooses to uh, employ, and hopefully that type of discipline is they, maintained. And they're, they're, they started already? Yes, yes we, just, yes, we just started with them. We started with them, uh, I think it's uh, the beginning of this week. Uh, All right, Bob. Hi, this individual that was uh, that was injured. Yes, sir. Is he a regular at your place? Uh, to my knowledge, I have not seen him. Um, supposedly, he had been. He's a, he's a regular within the establishments in the area. I personally cannot say that I know him or have seen him prior. Okay. Uh, you are aware that he was well known to the police as being somebody who had been in several problems with the police department. The individual that was harmed? Yes. I was no, I was not aware of that. Uh, yeah, I, I actually spoke with Captain Gods this afternoon about it. And he said that the individual is not willing to cooperate to find the guys that hit him. And that they were well aware that he'd been in several uh, difficult situations, let's just say, in the past. So they are very familiar with the individual, but they don't know who actually hit him. The fellows that hit him, were they regular customers? To my knowledge, again, not people that I, that I can say, personal people that I can have sat with and had a, a good conversation, a good time with? No, definitely not. You know, uh, sometimes people, because of the incidents that you speak of, <clears throat> they become banned at other venues. And so it goes from, okay, well, I can't go to these three. Let me give my look at this one. And now, obviously, this is another one added to the list of places that he won't be able to attend. Unfortunately, there's no way of us knowing that at the door if a person comes in with, you know, in, in, in decent apparel, presents an identification that is valid. Uh, you know, we wish that there were better signs, you know. Maybe, maybe one of the things we should try to do is coordinate amongst the bars along the strip 
and say, hey, if you've got someone who's banned, let each other know. Excellent. I think that that's an excellent idea. We actually, we, we, we actually, what we did recently with a female that entered that, that, uh, that, that potentially caused uh, an issue is we sent it to all, we did, we sent it to all of the managers in the other venues to basically let them know, you know, out of courtesy. Now listen, this individual gave us a problem. We suggest that you don't let them in. Obviously right. at that point it's your decision. Right. But, and, and, and anyone that we've received that information from, be it from the local uh, establishments, we have also taken their point of view into consideration and not allowed people in. With, you know, I know it sounds like it's just, you know, cliche to say, but we really are doing our best. It's just these incidents have come in a short period of time, and, and, and we understand why we are under the fire we're under. Yes, ma'am? Are these community people? Uh, from what I understand, the individual that was harmed is from the area. I don't know as far as living within the Brosnick parameter, but they're from the general immediate Bronx area. And where are you uh, promoting your staff? Your staff? Who's promoting you? <laughs> we, are, we're, we, don't, we don't have promoters. We're, we're self-promoting. Um, we're you know, against promoting because yeah. when you promote, you bring anybody from everywhere right. else in the staff. We basically we post on our own page. <laughs> We have, you know, via Instagram and things of that nature. And, you know, the thing is, when you have an establishment that is, you know, I, I would like to say successful in some regard, the word does spread and, and, and people just show up and we can't, we're not passing flyers out, we're not <clears throat> going to random neighborhoods and leaving, you know, paraphernalia for people from outside neighborhoods to come in. We're not doing any of that. We're not hiring mm -hmm. DJs that are from, say, Queens or Brooklyn or another borough trying to get that crowd over. We're basically occupying within, you know, just our own realm. But we're, you know, I guess word does spread and, you know, people choose, I guess, where they want to go from there. Marjorie, you had a question? Yeah, um, I just wanted to follow up. You had mentioned, and I don't know if you said it before, but the individual that was hurt, have you banned him from coming into your premises now? Yes, I'm, uh, security is well aware. Uh, we, we do have a, uh, a visual of the individual, the right. first name. Uh, he will not be uh, And allowed. do you have his license saved as well when you retire? Yes, he is, he is within, uh, he is within the computer system. Okay, how about the other individuals? Since you did see their licenses, did you ban them as well? Well, or, the, the, we don't uh, know. Did you give them to the police? That the, we, we gave over the, uh, the, the video footage. footage. That's what they requested. Okay. We, we simply handed it right over. We have a visual on them. We don't know if we can actually, you know, sometimes license, I mean, my license is from 15 years ago. I was a lot slimmer and had hair, so I look really good. But, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, you know, you know how that can go. But, um, you know, it, we, you know, so as far as the visual aspect of it, okay. knowledge, you know, we, we, we do, and what we do to our bouncers, we give them, they have about eight or nine screenshots right. of people that are definite known Okay. And that's just a given. Like, they're you know, basically known to, you know, All right. knowledge. All right. I have one question for you. Yes, sir. Is Vigma Lounge no more? Are we changing the name? Are we surrendering a license? Things like that do take some time. Yes. Um, I want you to right. speak because you're the owner. Yes. Just no disrespect to you, but I would like you to discuss. You're the owner of this facility. Yes. What are we doing going forward with Lounge? Well, is it no more so these people understand that this, for lack of a better word, nuisance right. won't continue on? Right. I'm What's fine. I'm, I'm fine. With all due respect, I'm sorry to cut you up quick because I'm more frustrated than anyone else here. Um, I'm, 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 a, as well. I'm a owner. I'm a owner. Of, uh, uh, I'm a owner as well as, as restaurants, and local restaurants in the neighborhood, and we've been running an establishment for a very long time, and we've been very successful in doing the right things in our community. I'm totally against violence. I'm totally against anything that's going on, and it's really pissing me off to the point that I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this anymore. So I spoke to my manager. There's a lot of people that we do employ, and I told him, I said, "Listen, I'm going to restructure. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put my license in for safe keeping." I'm gonna restructure everything in the, in the area. I'm gonna put in a restaurant. I'm looking to put a restaurant in there now and shy away from the the nightlife. I don't want the nightlife anymore. I'm really, myself, really tired of the nightlife. I wanna have more or less of a nice family group, a nice restaurant to come inside and go, and I know for that, it, it will do very well. But I just can't shut the place down today and just tell everybody, you, you're out of work. I still have a lot of bills to pay that's there. I'm stuck onto a lease that I can't get out of the lease. I still have a lot of obligations in there. I'm still paying a lot of bills, taxes, everything that I have tons of that that place needs so to be paid. And I'm not going to just shut down today and say, okay, forget about my bills. This place is going to come looking for me, which the place do has that. I'm not going to do anything right now at this time, close even earlier until we restructure this. I'm going to put my license in the it. I, I want to do this. I want to put it down because I'm going to restructure everything, do everything. But from now on, like I just told them, I want to shut the place down at an earlier time. On the weekends, I'm going to shut down at 3 o'clock. On the weekdays, no longer, it's 2 o'clock. I want it down at a certain time because I don't want headaches anymore. And it's nothing that you can do. We try our best. I'm more frustrated than anything you can hear in my voice. So even having to come here, and I'm so sorry for everyone here to come here because I wouldn't want them to run the neighborhood thinking about, oh my God, if my kid goes by and goes 
come on, I don't want this crap. And I keep it, you know, I keep it 100%. I don't want this. And at the end of the day, we can't control the people that's coming in and doing the things at the spur of the moment. You know, there's drinking. Everyone's going to go crazy. Anywhere you go where you serve liquor, there's always going to be someone who's going to have a bad apple. But from five years being in business, and this is where we had in the past year, and this is where we got, I could say, listen, I did a hell of a job. For five years, especially in the bar business, they don't last that long. I went in there, and I, and I really put a big structure, and I'm very strict with everyone in there when I walk into this place. But I can't be everywhere at one time, because I do run my other restaurants as well. So when I do try to show my appearance in there, everyone sees that I'm there. It's very well controlled. And so unfortunately, we have these people that come in for the first time into my establishments. I don't know who these people are, but the first time they walk in there, and it was the same incident happened there, the first person I walked in there for the first time and had an incident. Now there's another incident. I've never seen this person in my life, and I know, and I know everybody in the neighborhood. And I never seen this guy's face. I don't even know who they are. And they come in. I heard it from a, a, a local area. I'm not mentioned, but I'm not here to point at other places. They came from another establishment where they're from. And then that's what started here. And you know, it's just sad. I'm just frustrated. Listen, I just want to make sure that my employees have places to go and get a job. I'm looking to restructure and make sure that my employees have a place to go. And then I'm going to restructure. I'm going to shut the place down. Um, I just need a couple of, you know, I got structured. And, like, I think within a couple of weeks to a month, I'm not going to put my license up, restructure everything. I'm just coming up with a different plan. So come up with a restaurant and do something better for this community because I'm tired of hearing this crap. Thank and you. I don't need it and no one here needs it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, what, what day of the week does this happen? It's out of two. And what are your, what's your closing hours? Oh, uh, we're leaving we were on top until four. We do close at three now. We will push it out until two. Until two. Okay, and on the weekend, are you open? Uh, until 4 a.m., which we've actually, uh, we now turn our lights on at 3.15 to 3.30 p.m., and we're at 5.00, we're not operating until then. Okay. So we've made certain steps. Obviously, it doesn't negate what's already happened, but we are trying to implement certain steps. Right. In the future, would you consider closing earlier? Sure. Oh, yes, definitely. That's, that's the plan. Even on the weekend, we have, like, like you see, we have city officials there. We got police. We have people out there going to have EMS. They go to They know us. I mean, you walk into our center of fire, say you won't believe you're walking in tree month. You know, there's a lot of people that's coming. They're they coming on. They, 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 they take in this place for a bad reputation. If they want to actually walk in and see the clients that we have there on the weekend. You wouldn't believe it. You go to them. I got the, I got the, the captain of Bright Design, and I got the warden there. I have, um, you know, I have everybody. Oh my God, we love your stuff. They having their birthday parties and they bringing their families. They're in the suits and ties. I'm like, wow, this is nice. That's what we try to bring. In the weekdays, what do you get in the weekdays? Not everybody that works seven days a week want to go hang out on the weekday. We're working class people. You know the work. But you're going to get the young guys that come on, and I'm 25 and over. I don't care if they're 21 and over. I don't care. You're not coming in. I don't need your money. I don't want no hands. Thank you. Mine? Just a quick question. To you, to the fan. Um, the only time that you've been in front of us as a board has been when you had to get your license or when you had a problem in the past. If we gave you the opportunity to sit down with, with the board at a minimum, along with your other nightlife colleagues as well. Sit down and discuss just the effect that your, your bar has on the neighborhood. You guys could exchange best practices, et cetera. If we made that available to you, would you be one? I thought yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the disconnect is one of the issues. No, I think, well, I, I say that because one of the things we have to do is we have to bring these businesses together in the spirit of community. And if the only time we talk to you is when there's a problem, or right. the only time we talk to you is when it's about the license, right. then we're not interchanging as neighbors. So if we were to put out that invitation, say sure. once every couple of months, to you, to your other colleagues to along, the, along the tree mine, you think you'd be willing to do that? I would love to. And, and it's so sad that it's not going to be at the same time that we're actually doing a fundraiser for someone from the world who came here, the little kid. And at the same time, I don't want it to seem like, oh my God, this happened. Now that we do this, we've been planning this from, from last year. We're just looking for the right day to do this. But unfortunately, with these events that's going on, we do a lot. You know, and people don't see what we do good. Well, this is giving an opportunity. And, and, and it's like, you know, they say, oh my God, they're back. Oh my God, for halftime, they had a girl. And 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 uh, Patty's that, you know, like, this, right. you know, this, we got to keep going. Uh, thank you. Okay. you know, uh, <laughs> sorry, do you have a question? Yes, um, just one quick question. You mentioned, you mentioned that you have other restaurants. Are they in our area? Yes, they are. What, what restaurants Havana, are they? Havana Cafe. Havana Cafe. Yes. And we don't condone to, to places that's going to be a headache. We do not want that. And we've been doing a great job in this community, and we've been doing a lot also, and we're looking to do the same here. Joe? The security offices you have, 
tell us what their responsibilities will be? Are they peace officers? Do they carry weapons? No, no, not in any capacity, not, not even maids. Nothing is allowed to be carried. Uh, the most that they're allowed to do is, like I said, uh, do their best in a removal procedure without closed fist and anything that they're acting as counselors. In essence, yes. All right, Tommy. Uh, I, I did talk to the point that recently, Captain, and uh, Bob's correct. The guy is known to be a little bit of a troublemaker. Uh, he's had a lot of problems in the past with other bars, and he hasn't been cooperating with the 45th. But that said, I think you do have to restructure because yeah. the Vapor Lounge has got such a bad reputation, and I think you... I think if you don't change the name, you don't change, I'll the, change way the, you, tomorrow. the way you're doing business. Tomorrow. Let me finish. If you don't change the way you're doing business, yeah. you're going you're gonna to attract somebody from right. uh, two years ago that remember that's a place that you could have trouble I'm, with. I'm 100% with you. Now. But on top of that is I'm glad you changed your security team because I think that when there's trouble and you just get a little whiff of it, and you're on top of it right away, and you get those guys the hell out of your place, that's what you got to do. And I think you got to get much better at that. Not security guys looking other ways and everything. As soon as something happens, look, you're getting a little rowdy, you got to leave. And then, if you're still getting a little uh, conflict with that, you call the 45th immediately. Which means that you only did. Because, and he told me you did. Because this is what's happening. You're here before us for something else. You promised us you were going to do this. You're here with us. You promised you were going to do something else. I don't want somebody to really get hurt. And then, but I think if you just change your whole structure, change the name, just get rid of it. It's just been a, a bad experience. The, the community is outraged. And you can't blame them. And I think that would be the best thing for you guys going forward. Change everything. I'll change the name as soon. I'll put it in for tomorrow. I'll take everything down from there Thank as you. soon as possible. I'll take the name out. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't care. I, I, I can hear in your sense, voice. You don't need I'm to see this. I don't need this crap. Honestly, not. I want everything to be right. I, I don't want. I don't want. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're up, Bobby. Thank you. Let's get this out of the way. Okay. Um, my name is Bob Jean. I'm the president of Drugs Neck Merchants Association. And I'm also one of the chairmen for the incoming Drugs Neck bid that will be coming into the neighborhood this year. Um, I don't condone what happened. I don't agree with it. Uh, there has to be some changes. Um, but I have come up with Tommy Akamana had reached out to me in the past and said, we got to get together with the merchants to come together and make this thing stronger so we can start helping things in the community. I think this would be the perfect opportunity to start because you had a great idea of getting all the bar loans. There was supposed to be a leprechaun thing on this weekend, which uh, our Moana's was going to do. We turned around and we stopped it. Because the simple reason why turn around and bring more possible problems to people drinking in bars already than to bring a bunch of green little leprechauns running around down the day. It's, it's going to piss somebody off. So, you know, smarter heads prevail and we shut it down. Uh, the thing that I do want to say, though, is that uh, I know Toby and Kevin and them for a long time. They do have a big footprint in this neighborhood. They do have other places right outside this neighborhood. They have about five or six businesses. They're not thugs. They're not bullets. Okay? When you deal with alcohol, you're going to deal with a problem. Because if we're going to turn around and do something every time something happens with alcohol, we might as well check. Just close every bar in the Bronx because it's going to happen sooner or later. Doesn't mean that it was right. Okay, so as far as getting together, the first thing that I wanted to do is get together with the board and see if they wanted to have a meeting with all the bar owners. And I'll make sure they're all there. And we should have a meeting. You know, we did that with 2800 Brooklyn Boulevard. We got John Moran, we have people on there. Everybody's thinking it was going to be a homeless shelter. It's not. It was straightened out by communicating. To turn around and bring a kibosh on everybody some, every time somebody does something wrong, that's wrong. We're here to build. We're not here to destroy we're here to, to, to make things better for our community, not make things worse. And in the, in, in the interim, something does bad happen. It happens. But we have to turn around and come together and, make, and fix it. Not take somebody else out of business. Okay? And uh, that's all I got to say about that. The other thing is, uh, we are going to be meeting with SBS, I believe, on uh, April 11th. 
to testify in front of them on the big coming into the neighborhood. This is something that people will be talking about a hundred years from now, having a bid in this neighborhood. No bid has ever failed. It's going to make the, the, the area better. It's going to make businesses better. We turned around 65% of the no's to come back to yeses because communicating with them and telling them the truth, they listened. And this is where we are now. And it's because of people like Jim McQuaid and John Morano, Tommy Akamata, Matt Cruz in the, small, in the short time that he's been there, great help. We got people that are property owners that were dead against this, and I got them to sign ballots in the last couple of weeks. You know, and we got more new companies coming in. I got a meeting with Panera Bread. I'm trying to get Starbucks in the neighborhood. It's just a start. But you got to be able to talk. You can't be turning around and trying to take people's livelihoods out from under. I'm not saying that that's what we're doing, but it just seems it's always the first thing that we look to do. Talk to each other. Get things done the right way, and things will happen the right way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I have a concern because the, the issue with the Vapor Lounge, uh, I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of stuff missing. And we need to make sure that the NYPD, you know, I, I'm concerned, was there a call to 911? There was. There was. Okay. There was. And why did it take a week for it to come out? And I know that we don't always get things in the media, but it seems like this issue isn't really going to resolve anything because we're we're talking about ban you know band-aiding things. We got to be very careful because somebody could have lost their life, uh, and and the violence. And I'm concerned also because I have a background in security that how a person could actually go around and get away from security and then go back and, and get hurt. And so I, I'm beginning to think that maybe this thing was brewing and that maybe this thing was being type of suppressed. And we gotta be very careful because uh, if, you're in a, if you're in an establishment and you are drinking and you're just there as an innocent bystander, I would hate to see somebody get hurt. But the Havana Cafe, and the Vapor Lounge are owned by the same people. And I tell people, even on this board, and I'm going to say, we got to be careful which restaurants that we attend because if they're going to bring an issue before the board and you're over there all the time and you're chummy with the management, how are we going to be objective about this? Maybe somebody else should take care of the problem. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. All they're going to speak is about the Vapor Lounge, correct? I don't see anyone down here. So right now, let's go to Jose Garcia. 